What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. We are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup slash Life After Lockup. It's the season two, episode 21, Close Calls. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode was boring. I was expecting more. It was boring, so hopefully I can make this review entertaining enough for you guys um, because it's not gonna be long at all. So let's get right into the bullshit. All right, y'all, so we gonna start with Clint and Goddess, okay? You know they arguing because she found out about him sexting some girl named Stephanie. So they're talking about it. She finally then came out the bathroom. This motherfucker done kicked toes all in the wall. I wonder who gonna pay for that because I bet he's still paying for the rental car that Tracy went off and stole from his ass from when the last time when they got married or whatever, right? So he says after all that happened when they first got married that he was feeling lonely and vulnerable. And so when old girl Stephanie reached out to him or DM'd him, he was just open for the conversation. He was open to talk to anybody because he was upset about what Tracy did to him. But he claims he's really not in love with this woman, Stephanie. They were just sexting or whatever. But goddess is like, um, no, you told her I wasn't your goddess no more. You told her you didn't love me no more. So what the fuck was all of that? But he was like, no, it was just, you know, I was just upset. I was mad at you. I meant what I said. I mean, I didn't mean what I said, yada, yada, yada. So y'all, they kiss and they make up and, you know, they, they gonna move on from there. But y'all, hold on, side note, time the fuck out. Clint and these nasty ass nails of him, Lord have mercy. Ain't no excuse, Clint. Why your nails so damn dirty, Clint? Why your hands so filthy like that? And Tracy just letting them rub all on the touch, all on the face and on it. And his nails are fucking disgusting. And the cameraman petty as hell. The cameraman keeps zooming in and panning in on the man's nails. Because he looking at him like I'm looking at him. Don't touch me with them nasty ass nails. But y'all, Making my edges itch, making my edges itch. So it's the next morning, right? And so Clint, um, Goddess is outside sunbathing on the side of the pool or whatever. So Clint goes outside and talks to Goddess. And so Goddess is like, okay, for you to make it up for me, I don't need you to prove to me how much you love me. Now that we're here in Vegas, let's go to one of the chapels here and let's renew one of our vows. In her mind, that's having a traditional wedding by going to one of the chapels in Vegas and renewing their wedding vows. And so Clint is even kind of like, mm, I don't know if that's really a good idea for us to do. Tracy wants to call mom, wants to call Miss Alice and let Miss Alice know that we're here in Vegas and we're going to renew our vows. Clint don't want to do that. He's like, girl, bitch, my mama don't like you, number one. Number two, mama don't even know we're here in Vegas. She not supposed to know that. This ain't nobody supposed to know that we're going to be in fucking Vegas, but I, you know, we can call her. So he calls up mama and she's excited, girl. I was proud of Miss Alice. When she answered the phone, she was like, well, hey, Tracy. Well, hey, Clint, how's it going? How you guys doing? I was like, I'm gonna look at you, Miss Alice. Coming on around the mountain. I ain't mad at you, girl. So they FaceTime or whatever, and she's like, you know, hey, we're in Vegas, and you know, Clint and I have decided that we're gonna go to a chapel, and we're gonna have a traditional wedding, and we're gonna renew our vows. Mama wasn't here for that shit. Mama was like, um, hold on. First of all, that's not a traditional wedding. A traditional a traditional marriage is you, you go to a church and you get married in front of the Lord and all that. And I don't think that's a good idea, Clint. But I mean, you're a grown adult. And if you want to do that, Clint, I mean, you go right ahead. It's, as long as I don't get any more phone calls. All she worried about is she don't get no more calls about motherfucking crack. As long as she don't get no more calls about motherfucking crack, y'all gonna on and live y'all goddamn hot mess of a goddamn life y'all that was pretty much the end of tracy and and clint right there they just gonna go to a chapel and they gonna renew their vows whoop de boo moving on from them y'all so sarah goes and meets with the divorce lawyer right her and mike have been married over a year and a half they got married when mike was in prison so she's meeting with the lawyer and the lawyer is asking her you know give me a rundown of everything that's going on and why you are here today to ask for a divorce 
So Sarah Terrell tells her the whole story about how they got married when he was in prison, how he got out, he disappeared for two days, that's when he was with Megan, and she found out she was pregnant, and you know, he's with this whole other girl, yada, yada, yada. Now, I know the lawyers get paid, you know, if the person takes the case, or if they lose, you know, if they win the case, or the trial, or whatever, but this particular lawyer seemed like she was more or less trying to, uh, trying to talk Sarah into getting the divorce, as opposed to her actually trying to work it out with him. She was like, um, she had asked Sarah, like, you know, how come you've not gotten divorced a long time ago? Like, why didn't you do this? Like, why are you still married to this man? And Sarah tells her, you know, I'm scared. I have two kids. He's all I know, and I'm scared. And the lawyer's like, I'm scared if you stay with him. I mean, like, we just need to go ahead and just, you know, sign these papers. Like, let's get the ball rolling. Like, let's get you divorced. Like, you don't need to be with him. He's a loser. Like, let's go ahead and get this done. Like, I, the bitch, she, I get her, though. She's trying to get her coins. She's trying to get up her bag. And she see a bitch walking in here who got a deadbeat ass husband, deadbeat daddy, and cha-ching. Let's go ahead and get this going. Let's drop these papers. Let's get you divorced. Let's get she out of here single today. Like, she's ready for it. She is ready for it. Sarah goes and she meets with her manly homegirl afterwards. And she tells her manly homegirl that um, she wants to be the one to serve Michael with the divorce papers. Now, the divorce lawyer even told her, typically, you have a processor that goes and serves them. Because what can happen is he can get in your mental and he can talk you out of actually going through with the divorce. But Sarah, in her mind, that'll give her the power. And I think she just wants to just to, just to dig it into Michael. Just to be like, here. Fuck you. Here you go. I'm divorcing your ass. It is what it is. Um, I don't wish divorce on anybody. It would be great if they could work their relationship out, if nothing else, for the sake of their kids. But, I mean, Sarah, he ain't no damn good. And if you're going to go through it, go through with it. But if you ain't, then try to work shit out. But don't play with it. That's all I'm saying. Don't play with it. But, um... Yeah, moving on from them. Later on, though, Megan does drive. No, I take that back. Sarah drives to Michigan with her babies because she wants Mike to see the girls and she wants to be the one to actually hand him the divorce papers. Um, it seems like on the next episode, he is in agreement with it. So we're going to see what happens from there. I don't know, but hopefully if she's going to go with, through with it, she actually goes through with it. If not, y'all work shit out and you do it for the babies. It. Who cares? Do what y'all fucking gonna do. Megan is talking with her dad. Now, Megan finally tells her dad the whole situation that happens with Mike. Y'all, Megan's dad reminds me so much of my biological father. <laughs> Just because daddy, was, daddy wasn't here with the shits. He was like, look here, um, call up this motherfucker right now. Call his ass up so I can talk to his ass right goddamn now because he needs to know that he ain't shit. And if for nothing else, I need to know why the hell he didn't let you know that he was goddamn married with a whole baby. Megan is like, no, daddy, don't do it. No, dad, no, don't do it. Here, here, here he is on FaceTime. Bitch, you was, <laughs> she was with the shits too. But daddy gets him on FaceTime and daddy's like, you know, what's up with you? Don't you think it would have been a good idea for you to tell her that she was married? And Mike is like, you know, yeah, but at the time, you know, it just didn't happen. But me and your daughter, we both done some foul shit to each other. We both hurt each other. And so um, what happened between me and her, you know, I don't feel it's my place to tell you. She needs to let you know. And so daddy was just basically being a daddy. Like, you know, I want what's best for my daughter and you should have told her that you were married and I don't want y'all to be together. Yada, yada, yada. But the, the thing that I do respect about Mike, he didn't tell her daddy, like, hey, did your daughter tell you that she slobbed down my whole homeboy? Which we don't know for sure if that's what happened. All we know is that they kissed, but... I feel like something more happened from that. But I commend Mike. Mike was very respectful on the phone with her dad. Um, I felt like he could have got, it could have got left. He could have got like real ratchet and niggerish with him. But he didn't. He was respectful for him, respectful with him. He didn't tell old daddy about, you know, the situation between his homeboy and Megan. He was like, you know, let your daughter know what's good, how we both hurt each other. And then they hung up the phone from there. But Megan still says that she loves Mike and that she wants to see what's going to happen between them. Megan, boo-boo, honey, girl. He ain't for you, Megan. He not. And girl, I'm team you all day. 
I'm, I'm team you. I don't like Sarah. I, I, I don't like Sarah for the simple fact of you, you, you mad at this girl for the shit that your husband was doing. You mad at her for your husband being a hoe. That's why I don't like Sarah. You gonna be mad at the motherfucker. Be mad at him. Okay. Now, Megan, you, 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 you tiptoeing on me, not really feeling you because he's married and you still loving on him and you still want to be with him and you still want to see where shit works out with him. That's why you kind of like losing me on that. But girl, Megan, girl, give it up, turn it loose. He ain't for you, girl. But move right along from them. Y'all. Scott and Lizzie. Okay. So Charlene gets to the house. She walks in and Lizzie walking around the house in a whole robe. Like, she the queen, bitch. She the motherfucking queen. Them two like eyes. They looking at each other like, bitch, bitch. Lizzie's like, oh, you have a key? Charlene said, oh, of course I do. I live here. And um, Lizzie's like, okay, well, look, he gave, he gave me a ring. I have a ring. Charlene like, so, bitch, and so what? So Charlene tells Lizzie, like, look, I don't feel like y'all need to be together. I feel like y'all relationship is fucked up. Lizzie is getting on my nerves because she's steady starting shit with Scott. She calls Scott in and basically wants Scott to choose between her and Charlene. And Scott is like, look, that's my best friend. She's been my best friend for over 15, 20 years. I love you. You my girlfriend. I'm not finna choose neither one of y'all. What I don't like is how Lizzie tried to call Scott out in front of Charlene. He was, um, she say, uh, how about you tell her what you were telling me in the car, how you couldn't get rid of Charlene and yada, yada, yada. That wasn't your place to bring that up. She brought that up because basically she's trying to make Scott choose her over Charlene. When Lizzie, you got some fucked up ways about you still, still got some fucked up ways. She's steady trying to start shit with this man to make him feel guilty so he'll fall in love with her. When girl, it, ooh, it was just getting on my nerves, right? And so Charlene basically tells Lizzie, like, the only way I'll approve of y'all's relationship is if you take a drug test. Lizzie agrees to take a drug test as long as Scott takes a drug test. Because, again, last episode, you remember she said she found some dope spoons in his drawer. Which I don't think was no damn dope spoons. I think that was that man's cooking spoons, quite honestly. But, again, that's Lizzie's way of starting some shit with him. And so she agrees to take a drug test as long as Scott takes, uh, takes a drug test. Quite honestly, I don't feel like Lizzie is doing drugs. One, because... I don't know if she's on parole, probation. She's on one of them puh because she just got out of prison. And so I don't think she would be stupid enough to do any of that shit knowing that cameras are lurking around all over the place. But Scott, as we see on the next episode, Scott is refusing to take a drug test, which maybe he is doing something we don't know about. I don't know, y'all, but it was, it was stupid. It was stupid. Lizzie was just trying to start some shit. Charlene, y'all... Again, I don't think Lizzie is doing no drugs because I think she's on parole or probation or whatever. I think that's just Charlene's way of maybe having, you know, some kind of way to, I don't know, prove to Scott that maybe Lizzie ain't the one for, I don't know. I don't know if Charlene is feeling Scott her damn self. I don't know, but fuck them moving on from them. Y'all, Andrea and Lamar, right? So they're driving to Utah. She left the kids at home because she wanted Lamar to just soak up this whole Mormon experience, right? She's hoping that when they get there, he'll fall in love with Utah. He'll fall in love with the Mormon lifestyle and he'll convert to being a Mormon and he'll want to move to Utah. I can tell you off the rip, bitch, that ain't finna happen. Just tell you, it ain't finna happen. Lamar ain't finna be no Mormon and he ain't moving to Utah. If anything, I see him moving to Utah before I see him being a Mormon, but he ain't gonna do that. <laughs> he ain't gonna do that. But, um, they're on their way to one of her friend's house parties, right? Now, Lamar is saying, even though they're Mormons, I hope it's gonna be lit. I hope they're ready to turn up. Baby, Lamar came ready to party. He came loped out, gangster set, tripping, banging in his best Nipsey Blue, bitch. He had on his lopes with the do-rag, with the skull on top, with the blue bandana, with the button up, it looked like maybe it was some dicky shit he had on. He was ready to gang bang, a set it off, a chill. Either way it go, baby, Lamar came TTG, train to go. He was ready to go. 
So they get to the house party or whatever, right? He accidentally grabs non-alcoholic beer because one of the girls at the party was like, why didn't you bring real beer? He's like, man, I didn't know. I just seen beer and I just grabbed it. So I wasn't paying no attention to Lamar. You in Utah. You in Mormon territory. You got to pay attention to shit like this. You can't just go up in there grabbing something just thinking it's going to be what it is. No, you got to read the labels on that shit or whatever, right? But, you know, they kind of joked or whatever with him around that. He's outside talking to one of her homegirls. One of the homegirls say one of the white girls in there wanted him to feel welcome, so they made some chitlins. Lamar laughing like a motherfucker. He like, can't no white girl make no chitlins. She wanted me to feel welcome. She could make some fried chicken for all of that. I wonder if it was the same friend of hers that was like, this was my second time meeting Lamar. The first time was at the wedding, and had I not met him before, I would have never thought that maybe he's a hardcore criminal like girl stop. Stop. It's some stuff you say and it's some stuff that's in your mind that you don't say. You just keep it up there in your mind and you don't say it. But, but bless her heart. Bless. It's a Texas thing. Anybody from Texas that hear me say bless your heart. Y'all already know what I mean from the, bless her heart. But um... Lamar is outside fishing with the fellas, right? Meanwhile, Andrea's inside talking to the homegirls. Now, while he's outside fishing with the fellas, Malachi comes up to him. And I'm going to call him Malachi because he was giving me real children of the corn vibes. And Lamar was feeling the same thing, real Twilight Zone-ish. He comes up to him and the way he's talking is very cult-like. He's like, well, as you know, Tennyson is on his way to his mission. And I just really want to explain to you what the mission is and what the Mormon Book of Mormons is. And maybe you'll convert over to Mormonism. And maybe you'll understand why being a Mormon is so important. I mean, it was just real fucking weird. Real weird. The man, his beard, his the red hair, to me, I felt like, I don't feel like it was he was a true ginger. I feel like maybe he had, it had a, a, a PQ to it, so I feel like maybe all that red hair he had was a little bit dyed. I don't feel like it was real. Either way it go, we gonna call him Malachi, because he was real. The When he walked up and started talking, I'm like, what in the branch coat Davidian is going on here? It was real fucking weird, right? So, they trying to convert him to being a Mormon on the cool outside while they fishing. Meanwhile, she on the inside plotting with her homegirls. Andrea says she done already caught up her old job about getting her job back. She done already been looking for houses and apartments out here, looking for jobs for Lamar. She ready. She ready. All she got to do is just get the okay from this motherfucker and it's on and popping. Andrea, he ain't moving to Utah. He ain't fit to be no Mormon, girl. It ain't finna happen, child. Don't do it to yourself, baby. Don't do it to yourself. He ain't finna do it. He ain't finna do it, child. But that was the end of that, child. Um... Yeah, it felt real cultish. And and I hope I don't offend anybody when I say that. Just just watch the episode and you'll understand what, what I mean from that. But uh, move right along from them. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Marcelino and Brittany, y'all. Oh, this shit was funny as hell. Okay, so Marcelino in the minivan, he swerving, hitting corners because he mad. He got to go holla at Tito. This Tito got him fucked up. He trying to figure out what's going on with Giovanni. So he hitting corners in the minivan because he mad, right? So he get over there to Tito house. Soon as he walk in, they both kind of tensed up, whatever, right? Y'all, Tito seemed like he was coked out. That's just me. That's just my observation, my opinion. But Tito seemed like he was on one. And he was ready for whatever. He was ready for whatever, right? So Marcelino comes and he sit down and automatically Marcelino's already kind of aggressive or whatever, right? And so Marcelino's like, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with my, uh, with Giovanni because I've had Gio for over a year. And apparently I can't get no straight answers from Brittany, so I'm here to get some straight answers for you. So Tito's like, uh, well, we here to talk about custody. We here to talk about Brittany and what's good because uh, I've had him. You ain't had him for a year, you know what I'm saying? Because I've had him and that's my son. And I'll be dead before you take my son. Like, Tito... That coke shit was hitting. He wasn't here with the shits, baby. He was like, you with the shits, I'm with the shit shits, goddammit. Next thing you know, Tito like, um, what's good, Marcelino? Like, what's good? Marcelino take off them glasses, bitch. When Marcelino took off them glasses, it was showtime, baby. They was like two old men, like, fist the 
handcuffs, baby. It was so goddamn funny. They was throwing punches left and right where none of them landing. None of them punches was hitting, baby. Then they got to tussling on the floor, got to rolling around, backs and knees all on the floor, baby. They both gonna have a hard time in the morning. They both gonna need some Epsom salt baths after that. Cause when now one of them ready for it. When now one of them ready for them knees and that back to kick in the way it did, cause I could tell. Oh, I could tell. Afterwards, Marcelino goes back to the house. And of course, as soon as he pulls up, Brittany is outside and Brittany is pissed. Because by then, uh, Tito done already called Brittany and told Brittany, bring me my son in 30 minutes or I'm calling the cops. Now he's pissed off. What happened, what Brittany said was going to happen is exactly what's going to happen now. And now Marcelino's feeling guilty because he didn't think that the shit was going to go left the way it was. But it's like you came in with so much heat. Why would you not think that this man wasn't going to be on the same tip that you was on? Now it's going to be an all out custody war over Giovanni because Marcelino had to prove that he was the man y'all it i felt bad for britney in that moment because britney is like because you didn't listen to me now i'm gonna have to fight for my son because of your ass and marcelino even said he feels bad he feels guilty he didn't expect for things to go left the way that they did but they did y'all that was the end of the episode right there um was it watch worthy quite honestly no it was boring um, if you do watch it, um, just watch Andrea Lamar, watch um, a little bit of Scott and Lizzie, and um, watch Marcel Marcelino and Brittany, because they were the only ones that were entertaining. Um, everybody else was boring as fuck. Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all think about this review. I hope I made it entertaining enough for you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see y'all in the next video. Have a happy Saturday and a blessed weekend, y'all. Peace out what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i holla